Hi, this is Jada4 with PopPhoto.com and Inside Digital Photo. I'm here at Photo Plus Expo, and today we've got uh, Tom Sobey uh, with uh, Sigma with us today. Uh, he's going to show us uh, the new SD14 from Sigma. Uh, Tom, can you... Uh, this, this camera has uh, the Foveon chip, which is uh, quite unique. Can you tell us a little bit about some, uh, some of the, uh, the advantages uh, of this chip, what it offers? Sure. Okay. Basically, the, the concept of the Foveon uh, sensor is that it, it, it takes advantages of a property of silicon that actually can filter light as the light passes through the silicon material and breaks it into its component parts. So uh, unlike any other uh, digital imaging sensor, the pixels on the Foveon image sensor are arrayed in three layers one on top of the other, one layer to capture blue light, one to capture green, one to capture red. So at every site on the image sensor, the, pixel can, the, the sensor can actually detect and measure all three colors of light, unlike any other sensor where the pixels are arrayed in one layer and each pixel can only read one color, red or green or blue. And uh, the processor in the camera must therefore interpolate and try to reconstruct the missing colors at each site on top of the image sensor. Uh, this can uh, uh, result in uh, color artifacts, most usually uh, displayed as color rainbows or moiré patterns. And to alleviate this problem, other digital cam camera sensors employ a, an anti-aliasing filter or a blurring filter over the image sensor to soften the image slightly and hide these artifacts. Uh, but in so doing, it also reduces the uh, total resolution of the image uh, for the, which the uh, sensor could otherwise reproduce. Since the Foveon sensor arrays the pixel uh, sensors in three layers, and each sensor can, uh, each area can read all three colors, there's no need for interpolation. Therefore, there's no color artifacts, meaning there's no need to use an anti-aliasing filter, so you don't need that blurring filter. And you get the full resolution of the image sensor. So on a pixel level, you get almost double the resolution per pixel on a Foveon image sensor compared to any of the other t traditional uh, image sensors. And that's the main premise and the main advantage of the, of the Sigma uh, camera system with the Foveon sensor. Improved resolution and also better color uh, reproduction because actual uh, color information is generated at each pixel site. Nothing is reconstructed, nothing is fabricated uh, by the processor in the camera. Now, does that give you any uh, any, any advantages when you're trying to uh, you know correct uh, your color after the fact in in the post process? Well, uh, certainly uh, color can be adjusted as as desired, uh, but it usually results in it easier to reproduce accurately colors. Uh, for example, if you were to shoot a picture of a Macbeth color checker and then reproduce the image uh, from the Sigma camera to make a print, you'd be more an accurate representation of the Macbeth color checker colors than conventional cameras without as much work. Uh, but the, the biggest improvement is, is the uh, resolution also. People uh, with a previous model Sigma cameras have reported shooting pictures of large groups of people, a lot of small faces like a class reunion or a wedding uh, ceremonies, and where uh, Typical cameras don't reproduce all the details in the subject's faces in this large group. They can actually see more subject detail in the faces of the uh, subjects in these large group pictures. So it's, it's just uh, improved resolution is the main uh, uh, advantage of the Foveon sensor. Okay, now we've talked about the, uh, the uh, Foveon chip. Um, let's, can you pick up the camera and show us uh, the SD14 updates the, uh, the SD10. Um, can you kind of take us through what are some of the newer features on this? I hear you've got a, a bigger uh, LCD screen in the back, is that right? Uh, on the large, uh, on the back of the camera, the LCD display is uh, two and a half inches, where in previous models uh, the display was 1.8 inches. So it's a lot easier to see the de details in the picture when you're reviewing images. It's so much easier to see the uh, uh, information displayed on the menus, uh, and uh, it just makes it uh, more convenient to use the camera. Uh, this also coincides with the viewing system. Uh, the viewfinder in the camera has been improved to make a larger uh, image magnification in the viewfinder. Uh, previously, it was less than 0.8 times with a 50 millimeter lens. The new camera now uses a 0.9 or provides 0.9 uh, times uh, reproduction ratio. Okay, and this uh, the, the, the SD10 did not have a pop-up flash, is that right? That is correct, yeah. The previous cameras uh, had no built-in flash. The SD14, due in part to popular demand, we did uh, put a built-in flash with full TTL exposure control. Uh, and it can be used in conjunction with Sigma uh, shoe mount flashes, EF500DG Super Series flashes. Uh, it can be used as a controller for wireless flash capabilities. So you can do some pretty sophisticated flash uh, techniques if you wish, rather than simply on-camera flash. 
Okay, are there any other new features like uh, the battery or anything like that? Yeah, power supply has been revised and in the past uh, we used conventional CRV3 lithium batteries or AA size rechargeable batteries. Uh, but uh, we feel that it's more advantageous now to use a proprietary rechargeable battery system, which we do have. Uh, it's a simple module, a lithium ion battery, charges in about an hour and a half to two hours and provides enough power for about four to five hundred uh, pictures, depending on how much focusing, flash, or uh, monitor viewing is used, you know, all of which consumes power. Okay, and the settings and everything on this, uh, have they been updated as well? Uh, yeah, the controls are, are uh, uh, have been updated. Uh, some things have been retained. The basic drive functions with the drive control on the side of the camera provide, provide you basic drive functions, uh, power off, single frame shooting, continuous shooting, uh, two different self timers. Uh, a mirror lockup capability has been retained because that's a very useful feature, for, especially for studio work and nature work, uh, and the auto bracketing settings. These are all controlled uh, with the drive dial on the left side, and that's retained from the SD10 and SD9. Uh, the other control dial on the right side of the camera uh, did serve two functions. The large knob on top was a shutter speed control, and it was surrounded by an exposure mode control on a collar. Uh, at this point, they've eliminated the shutter speed function on this knob, and they uh, have moved the exposure mode functions to the top of the knob. And you have basic simple functions, uh, manual exposure, shutter priority, aperture priority, and a shiftable program function. Uh, to control the aperture and, and uh, shutter speed functions, there is a control uh, collar around the shutter release knob, uh, and depending on what mode you're in and what function you're using, the control com uh, dial will adjust either the aperture or the shutter speed. Uh, if you're in the manual mode, for example, simply turning the control dial will adjust the shutter speed. If you wish to adjust the aperture as well, there is an AV button on the back of the camera when you depress and hold the AV button and then turn the control dial, you'll be just adjusting the aperture rather than the shutter speed. So they've adjusted those controls. Uh, things uh, which were formerly uh, provided on the display menu on the back of the camera uh, are now been uh, changed and are visible, put the power on, are now visible uh, by pressing the ISO white balance button. And this displays four different functions, your ISO setting, your white balance, your resolution and uh, file type modes. And by using the four-way controller to the right of the uh, monitor, you can adjust, for example, the ISO with the up position. You can adjust the white balance with the lower position. And then you can adjust your resolution and your file types with the left and right positions on the four-way controller. OK, that seems uh, fairly intuitive. Now, uh, this camera is not yet in stores. Uh, can you tell us uh, when you expect it uh, to be uh, on sale? Sure. I expect uh, the SD14 we will start delivering, I hope, by the latter half of November. So in less than two weeks, they hopefully will appear on dealer shelves. Uh, probably limited uh, inventories initially as the factory builds up the production. OK, and uh, how much is this going to retail for? Uh, MSRP is $19.99 for the body. Uh, that includes a rechargeable module and a charger, the PhotoPro software CD, uh, and a strap and some small accessories. Uh, the street price will probably be around $1,600. And then you can mate any of about 40 different lenses for the camera, from fish eyes to ultra telephotos. All right. Well, great. Well, Tom, I, uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, one other thing. Uh, in the past, the previous cameras were designed really to record images only in the raw data mode because that's generally regarded as, as the best way to preserve the maximum image quality. Uh, but for convenience sake, uh, the SD14 now has the provision to shoot images in JPEG. And there are a variety of different resolution and quality levels in the JPEG, as well as uh, shooting the option of uh, raw data as well. And JPEG plus raw at the same time? Uh, no, not, the, not provisioned for both simultaneously. Well, great. Anything else? Uh, I guess that's the, the major features. Uh, for convenience for autofocus, uh, they have added uh, a five sensor uh, autofocusing system instead of a one central AF sensor. So you have the option of using any one of the five sensors individually, or you can allow the camera to select uh, the sensor automatically. Well, great. Well, Tom, I really appreciate you taking us through some of the features of the new SD14. Uh, look for it in stores uh, this, uh, this winter. And uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, Jay. Thank All you. right. This is Jada4, and uh, signing off, we'll, we'll be back. Uh, stay tuned with, uh, with Inside Digital Photo and PopPhoto.com for more great stuff.